I hope this finds all of you well and those that are suffering uh, hang in there and keep going through this and get on the other side of this and you will. Sometimes you have to do better and then sometimes you have to know when to draw back a little bit. So you have to kind of play a little bit here and working with others and working with yourself even. Uh, nobody's perfect in that way and you know we everybody does what they can. You know I've talked to YouTubers today and you know, some got off with the Thanksgiving and Christmas meals and now they're trying to get back on. And, you know, this is all just part of life here. So we don't judge everyone. We just hack on and keep going to get well and uh, get ourselves uh, rebuilt and uh, remembered genetically and start off with some uh, higher level genes. So with that said, let's take a look at this. I've got some questions here that I want to address. Uh, this is uh, Carla. Hey, sweetheart, uh, you're a 50-year-old gal. I like that gal, <laughs> spunky woman. Uh, I'm really not in line with bioidentical steroids. I love that word. You know, we use bioidentical, bioavailable, all this kind of fancy kind of stuff, and it really means nothing. You're on acid, acid, and, and, and base. You're on an acid estrogen, an acid testosterone with a base in there to neutralize both of them. In reality, those are, those are all three in, I'll say the estrogen and testosterone are probably more brother and sister than progesterone. Progesterone is the base side of those two that keeps those two in check and neutralizes them. And again, by taking them, it's well established. I don't care if they're bioidentical or they're yesterday's uh, soup, uh, you're going to lose your adrenals. And you just don't want to do that. It's just not worth it for a 50-year-old gal to lose her adrenals. Uh, it'd be hard to live with a woman like that. <laughs> but uh, you, you're, you don't. And remember, if you take them, I don't care what form they're in, your body quits making them. And they gave you, it's kind of like mixing hydrochloric acid in your acid digestive enzymes with your base digestive enzymes. Same kind of thing here. I don't like that. Uh, the fact, if you got weak adrenals, you got to fix them. And uh, fixamum can be all kinds of ways. You can use herbs, you can use glandulars, but you want to do a systemic, a whole systemic uh, work on yourself because if you're having trouble with adrenals, you're going to also have trouble with kidneys and the lymph system to some degree. So you want to fix those up and get your health back there and uh, think about the pituitary because if I read on, my symptoms at this time are mood swings, all right? Sleep problems, okay, so we're back up in the head here at the pineal gland and the pituitary irregular periods. Now that could be because you're a 50 year old gal, but at the same time, I'm going to be looking at your pituitary here uh, and, and going after that. And so here we go, <clears throat> uh, cystic jawline acne. So this is, you're very lymphatic up, up in the head here, sweetheart, and you've got to get this lymph system cleaned out so your pituitary can stand up and breathe and be the boss that it is. And uh, uh, get your adrenals up, get your thyroid, parathyroid up, uh, tender breasts. Again, that's the lymph system there, and that's showing that you're very acidic in the, in the breast tissue. Uh, that's a precursor to fibromyalgia. Uh, or uh, fibrocystic breasts, in other words, uh, a precursor to the little tumors and calcifications and everything else because the soreness is due to acidosis. So you're going to be forming these little calcifications. I saw him kill a lady over a little calcification once. A little calcification and they killed her. Actually went after her, put her on chemo radiation, did a lumpectomy on a calcification. I mean, that's insane. And some concentration mental fogness. Yeah, she, oh, uh, she's not overweight. I take good supplements, but my question was, is there a specific supplement or an herbal supplement uh, that would you keep things in check better? Uh, in Christ, Carla. Well, Carla, Christ would be doing a full body detox on you about now, detoxifying you, putting you up toward fasting, probably on fruits first, and uh, cleaning your lymph system out a little bit, getting rid of all this acne, clean up that lymph, which will then increase gland performance for yourself and bring these glands into harmony. He'd be picking the uh, herbs which his father uh, made for him, and uh, you would be using them. So I would definitely get into some of these protocols we've been talking about and getting your body back in shape. Absolutely. Uh, this was a question to Crystal while back. He recommends soaking your spouts in hydrogen peroxide. I've never done that. Um, 
I might clean my sprouts, but soaking them in hydrogen peroxide, I've never done that. I uh, uh, is uh, is use it now against mold on my sprouts. Well, you could, I mean, you could wash them in hydrogen peroxide, okay, but uh, I don't know um, if you got mold on your sprouts. I don't know why you would have mold on your sprouts. I mean, if you have mold on your uh, your beans or, or whatever you're sprouting, then that would that would be uh, considered too old to use in the first place. So you shouldn't have any mold problem. I never had any mold problems on any sprouts I ever grew, and I grew tons of alfalfa sprouts. Hydrogen peroxide sounds like isolated chemistry, and it is. Uh, yeah, and look at the process that they get hydrogen peroxide now. So uh, really, um, you know, if you wanted to soak them in, use a parasite in or something, but a good enough hydrogen peroxide just to clean them a little bit, maybe. Do you recommend growing your sprouts on soil or, or just in glass? Well, of course, I, do, I grew them in glass, and when we hydrate here, we grow things in glass, but of course, anything soil-based is going to be so much more powerful, but then there is ocean ponics, and you can grow sprouts in ocean ponics and blow them out of the water. More videos on consciousness and spirituality. I love that side of life, don't you? I mean, because it's a feel-good love side. I'm home with God's side. Uh, uh, I see all of you as brothers and sisters and, uh, and, and the Father, too. I love that side. That's the best side. You know, the longer I've been traveling as a traveler in the heavens and dealing with all these spiritual people and the spiritual masters and stuff, uh, I think I have less and less to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, after a certain point, there's not so much to say. You know, you get beyond the mind. The real issue is you've got to get beyond the mind. That's the, that's the uh, negative side of creation, if you will. And if you can get beyond that, I mean, the mind does hold duality in a sense, but especially at the causal level, but I would just uh, work on putting that mind as a, a, a gopher for myself and let me shine through. And then your, your experience of ecstasy and joy and laughter will be assured. So that's always the better way to go there. This uh, is uh, from P.G. Uh, Eschner. Uh, this is, uh, I too have seen these other world parasitic Ramona. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good question. Is it our duty to remove these beings from people, or are we supposed to leave them there as a function of the soul working out karma? Yeah, it's a very good question, and for some of the Christians, it might be a little hard to take this question, but uh, forgive us, because there is all levels there to work with, and so uh, it's just good information to know that you can always be a victim uh, of someone else. And they can be in their physical body, or they don't have to be in their physical body. You should always be the watcher of your consciousness, that no one takes advantage of you and takes your joy and happiness away, both uh, physical or etheric. Uh, for me, I used to be called the uh, uh, Ghostbuster in a different ways, because I used to always like to uh, take entities and uh, give them their uh, rightful place. There are some that are really gnarly out there. As you've seen more and more now on TV, they're bringing out more of these stories out. You see that from uh, the uh, uh, movie stars and things, and all these people, you see their, their stories. All I can say is, don't be too naive about things in life. Uh, I think you have to listen to your inter, uh, uh, intuition on that, that question, but a nice tap on someone's shoulder like, hey, someone's following you. <laughs> Of course, you'll probably freak them out. That's the other thing you got to worry about. Uh, people are not always realistic about things they can't see or touch. And so it becomes a little voodoo if you, uh, you can't see or touch anything. But we have to go beyond these kind of fears and get strong in, in who we are as, as, uh, as uh, the expression of God in creation and that we have to uh, respect that and get into our... Uh, more of a fullness of our beingness, you know. Emotionally and mentally, the Homo sapien is a, you know, very uh, inferior being here. We all need to get stronger. This is Anna, uh, Annie, uh, channel 139. I haven't seen you for a while there, sweetheart. Could be that I missed answering all these questions. But um, this was uh, interested in the lady with the MS. Well, you guys are about to see a nice video her husband's going to do on her. The thing is, 
he, these are incredible. I mean, he's a chiropractor, but he's a fitness freak. I'm telling you, I've never seen anybody work an MS client like him, even if it's his own wife. I think he uh, emailed uh, last week and she did 85 deep knee bends. That's hard for the average person to do. And she did 150 some uh, female push ups. You know, I mean, that's pretty incredible. This lady's tearing it up, man. I, you're going to see the after video, too. You saw the one in seven months. Where do you see this one? Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's unbelievable. But I've never seen an MS client that couldn't get up and walk again. And if you're an MS, you don't let anything stop you. And you, you've got to learn the lymph system and the acid cytochemistry and why you get brain lesions and all that and how you simply get all those acids out of the body and rebuild these lesions and get all any, uh, anything like that, rebuild the myelin sheaths. That's all a given. But you can't do that level of work on vegetables. I, I just flatly will tell you straight out. I've said this before. You cannot rebuild neurologically uh, in a human with vegetable matter. It, it requires fruits and berries. I just tell you, I've had a lot of experience with this uh, level here. Hey, Jaws. Hey, man. Ha. I have to laugh at this one, guys. I ate a pizza yesterday and been feeling sick all day. Uh, God, how stupid can a person be to eat such crap? Don't beat yourself up, Jaws. Uh, I remember it wasn't that long ago. Everybody wanted a pizza around me, my family and everything. So I said, okay, well, I want the littlest vegetarian thing you can get. Uh light tomato sauce knowing that was going to kick me and everything else. I had one piece and like to throw up. I mean that hurt me for hours and it's like the things homo sapiens do. So you're in good company my friend. We all, we all do that once in a while but you know what? It's kind of a safety net because when it kicks your butt it's a driving force to get you back doing good again. Your body knows exactly. I've always said if you can get your clients or your friends or your loved ones or yourself one month, one month on raw and then you go do something like a pizza nobody has to say a word. We all know what you're going to feel because <laughs> we've all done it or at least most of us. It's just life in the fast lane, you know. Some smells are overriding. Just some smells are so good they don't equal the taste or the effect of the food. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, this is N E R O L I, Nerola, uh, five twenty eight. Uh, this is the question regarding a 75 year old female with reoccurring bladder infections for twenty years. Well. I, I, that many years with that high acid in the bladder it can lead to nowhere good. So this lady really has to, to turn this around for herself. She's 75. She's got a lot more years in front of her, but she'll turn this around. Uh, definitely want to start drinking the heal all tea, I would, and start running those herbs through my bladder and my kidneys for sure. At the same time, I'm going to honk down with some herbs for my kidneys. I'm going to go after my lymphatic system since that's what this UTI or the bladder infection is. Uh, interstitial cystitis, it's all part of the same kind of crap, all part of the same stuff, and it's all about the lymph system. She was on antibiotics for five times a year. Oh, I mean, you know, her skin is breaking down with rashes, and the docs have used every uh, strain out there. Well, 